I really don't want to come out right now. <laughs> but how about you guys help me? How about you give me a drum roll? Can you give me a drum roll? All right, here we go. Why did it stop? Can it keep going? All right, here we go. Now, on the count of three, I want to hear your biggest clap. One, two, three. Go for it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was not the biggest clap. Can we try that again? Go back, go back. Three, two, one. Go for it. Hey. Maybe I should say clap in sequence. <laughs> All righty. I want it to come out here in style. I go bam, bam, bam. All right? <laughs> this is my symbol. What is this? Can anybody tell me? A die without face. This is my philosophy in life. My philosophy is that we don't control a lot of things that happen to us. That's chance. But what we do control is the ability to choose how we react to those events. So I choose to put as many happy faces on this die as possible. So the day that I roll the die and a thunderstorm occurs, I remember to go out and dance in the rain. It's all about perspective. It's all about attitude. And today, I want to start with the right attitude. So please, everybody go ahead and stand up. I want you to find a neighbor and do a double laughter yoga handshake. How many people know how to do that? No? Because I just made that up. Double laughter yoga handshake. Go ahead and take your right arm, someone else's right arm. Your left arm, someone else's left arm. And when I say go, I want you to shake hands and give me your biggest, fakest laugh you can ever give. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, thank you. Thank you for being good sports, a good audience, and always doing what I tell you to do. That'll come in handy later. See, I bet a lot of you came here and you weren't expecting to do that. But guess what? Life doesn't always give you what you want. Curveballs are thrown at you. And sometimes we look at events, sometimes, and most importantly, we look at people and we stop at the mask. We never look beyond the personality they're showing us. We never look beyond what they choose to give us, the information they choose to give us. We stop right here, and we never see the person underneath. I like to say thank you to my family, my friends, and love my life for seeing beyond my mask and showing me what I can truly become. Because you see someone up here with a dorky mask on who's confident, loud, screaming, ready to have energy in the room. But what you don't see is the boy behind the mask who struggled to get out of a life of gang violence. You see teenagers who you think are corrupted, who are so angry, full of hatred on the inside, but what you don't see is the hundreds of unanswered questions. They look to other people for support, who when they look at you, when they look at these teenagers, they just turn their face away because they aren't living up to society's rights standards. We see what we want to see, and we never choose to go beyond the mask. So how do we choose to go? How do we choose to truly remove the mask and see the person underneath? Well, that's something I like to call heroic leadership, because you humble yourself. I believe leadership nowadays is a little misguided. People think of leaders, they think somebody's towering over all the other people. I am a leader because I accomplished this. Well, guess what? Leadership is about so much more than that. And that's what we're gonna go through today. So how do we start on the path to heroic leadership? Well, we start by failing. It's always a good start. Failing gives you an opportunity, an opportunity to learn. A lot of people don't know that, but it gives you the opportunity to learn. Opportunity to learn not only about yourself, but about other people, how they live their lives. A lot of people start at the bottom. A lot of people make it to the top. But very few people at the top ever remember what it was like to be at the bottom. And that's where the leadership is defined. You see, at one point in time, I thought leadership was defined through ego and pride. I have this award, I have that award, I accomplished this, I did this event, all these things under my belt, I am so great. Thank you. <laughs> but is that truly leadership? No, it's not. I had to learn to fail before I truly understood the power of leadership. 
the true power of leadership. And there came a point in time where I thought I was ready to be a motivational speaker. I'm ready to go. I'm hungry. I got money. Not a lot of it, but at least I have some. <laughs> so I went on this path. I was at the starting line. I saw the finish line. I saw the goal. I know where I wanted to be. And my ego and my pride clouded everything else. I didn't see the rock in front of me. Oh, on the floor. <laughs> and I stayed here for a while. I lost money, lost my savings, lost my car. I almost went homeless because of my pride. But you see what happened here right now, why I'm still talking to you on the floor and why I'm making the first row very uncomfortable. <laughs> Look at where I'm at. I'm at eye level with you. I can see each and every one of your faces. I can each see each and every one of your smiles, each and every one unique feature. I'm here with you at eye level because I learned to fail. And I stay here because this is where I learned how to be humble. I'm not going to stay here the whole time, so don't get worried. I will get up. <laughs> In fact, let's get to that point where I do get up. See, I was at this place where I didn't know where I was going to go next. And that's when my father took me aside. And he sat me down, he talked to me, he said, why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you going after everything you want to go after and not remembering that you are not alone, that there are people here willing to support you, people here willing to fund your dreams, not only with monetary and financial statuses, but also emotionally, mentally. They are willing to help you. And then he said one of those powerful words I've ever heard in my life. You have done this to yourself. And that was my first leg up. But you see, I'm not completely up because I still needed other people. I needed somewhere to lean. Maybe someone's hand to hold so I can get truly on both my feet again because I was down low. You see, that's the beauty of failure. The beauty of failure is ownership. That I can own the failure. I can say, I'm proud I almost went homeless because from there I was able to learn where I wanted to go. From there I was able to take where I was and see other people who've lost everything and completely understand them and where they were. It was from that point on that I knew if you want failure to be opportunity, you have to own your failure. You cannot just let failure go about and point at the world and say, you did this to me, you did this to me, and this person and that person. No, 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 no. Own your failure, and you'll be able to move on from it, to gain opportunities, to move on to a brighter future. See, I also failed when I walked out of my family and I decided that the streets were about my family. But they fought for me, and God bless them. They got me back. Failure. Failure also leads to understanding, understanding the people that you are leading. See, when you lead people, you are not standing over them. They are not down here. And if they are, I got news for you. Get down on your knees and really try to understand them. If somebody's fallen, if somebody needs help and they're down here, don't look up, don't look down and reach your hand out saying, here, I can help you. No, go down on your knees. Hey, buddy, you okay? You want a sandwich? Coke? <laughs> Put your arm around them and let them put their arm around your shoulders and you rise together because they will be getting to a place they want to get to and you will be learning what you want to learn. Empathy. Because leaders today forget that they need to understand how to feel, how to feel for the people they need, how to truly put yourself in their shoes. As an AmeriCorps Vista, I used to always arrive at the office very, very early. And I ran into a custodian here at Stetson University. His name is Ben. A lot of you may know Ben. He's a very interesting fellow. He loves to talk a lot, so much that I probably would skip lunch and we started talking at 8 a.m. However, we got into a lot of philosophical discussions. And one of the things we started talking about was leadership. And he said in his very deep voice, which I will not try to mimic, I believe a leader has to be there for the people. And I looked at him and I said, well, yeah. The leader has to be there for the people. He's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I believe a leader has to be there for the people. Not those people, not those people, not a people, the people. All people. 
Because when you are standing up there, you have no idea who you are influencing, who's looking up to you for hope, who you look up to when you want your dreams, is the same little teenager, little kid who's looking up to you, hoping, dreaming, watching your every step. When you are a leader, you touch so many lives you've never even known you could ever touch. Learn to understand that, learn to feel that, and learn to feel where those people are coming from. One of the stories I absolutely love telling is, as an AmeriCorps VISTA again, I was able to go to a conference. The conference was for AmeriCorps members all over Florida, and they provided some entertainment at night. It was kind of like a spin-off of American Idol. It was called AmeriCorps Idol. And a lot of people came up, they started singing, they started dancing. Whee! No applause. <laughs> they started singing and dancing, and they showed all their talents across the stage. But then there was a very unique performance. There was this girl, about 18, 19. She couldn't walk, so they had to carry her out onto stage, and they put her on a chair. And she couldn't talk. But suddenly the music started playing on a loudspeaker, Michael Jackson. I started going, I'm gonna make a change for once in my life. And I thought, what's gonna happen? And by the next line, she goes like this. Gonna feel real good, gonna make a difference, gonna make it right. She started signing. I don't know how to sign, so don't take that as sign language. <laughs> She started signing the lyrics. She couldn't sing, she couldn't talk. This was a person who literally did not have a voice, but did. They showed us, through her heart, what it meant to be a leader. Because when she started signing, everybody stood up, everybody was clapping, there were people that were emotional, there were people in tears, everybody could see her up on stage, and when the song hit a high point, she started getting really into it, like, I'm gonna make a change. She got so into it, it was so inspirational. She led us with her heart. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know how to lead with your heart, people are never gonna follow you. Lead with your heart. She inspires so many people, because there are people who are voiceless. And as a leader, you give them a voice. It is your job, your duty. So with that, she was able to feel, and not only that, but she made us feel she made us feel for her and for everything she ever believed in. And because of that, she found her legacy. Number three, you have to find your legacy. Now, I don't mean create a legacy. I mean find your legacy. Truly find where it comes from in here. Because legacy is a beautiful thing. See, I had a teenager once. We've gone through a whole big mentorship process for about six, seven months. And it was time for the program to end. And we went around asking for goals, and he stood up. I remember the first time I walked into class, the teacher looked at me and said, there's your teenager, that one, the troublemaker. I didn't get a name, I didn't get his favorite subject, I didn't get his favorite band, his favorite color, nothing. That one, the troublemaker. And when he stood up, he said, when I first started this program, I wanted to be a football player. I still want to be a football player, but I know that might not happen. So I want to go to school for business, and I want to own a sports shop as a backup plan. And then he looked at me and he said, and I want to do what you do. I said, ooh, what are you talking about? He said, I want to come back here and so show teenagers that no matter who points a finger in their face and says they can't do it, they can. Because if someone believes in you, you can. And that's the legacy you choose to find. Now there's one thing I want to do before I leave you today. There's one thing I want you to remember. And once again, you're going to have to stand up now. <laughs> and I want you to do something with me. I'm going to turn this way. You're going to use your left foot. You're going to tap it forward once, back, once, back. And go your right foot, front, back, front, back. Good? Then you go left, left, right, right. So it's a four count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. I messed up. Don't listen to me. So when the beat starts, we're going to go ahead and start, okay? Now I want you to keep dancing, even though I turn around and start talking to you. 
Ready? Here it comes. You can add some motion to it if you'd like. We're going to start with the left foot. Two fronts, two backs on the left foot, two fronts, two back on the right foot, then left, left, right, right. Here we go. Ready? And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Left, left, right, right. Now keep doing it. Keep going. But I also want you to look around while you're doing this because you see people smiling. You see people catching the steps. You see people failing at the steps. You see different heights, different educational backgrounds, different skin tones, different colors, different spiritual religions, someone going crazy. You see so many different people, but you all are doing the same thing. And that's what a leader is about. You can see everybody, and you see them as individuals, but you can also see them as a community. Because once you light that fire in your heart, once you live the philosophy of heroic leadership, other people walking through the shadows will see that light. Other people will want that light. And when they obtain it themselves, they'll continue walking. They'll continue showing other people. And they'll pass it on and on and on until the whole world is lit with the hope and dreams of every individual. And only then will you ever become a heroic leader. And only then is when you find the champion within. Thank you, everybody.